Good morning. Today is October 15, 2024, and you've joined the Kubeflow community call. This call is governed by the Kubeflow Code of Conduct, and it is being recorded. We do have an agenda this morning. I'm your host, Josh Bottom, and we're going to walk through the agenda items as we do. We start with the release updates. I believe we do have Ricardo available. Ricardo, are you here to give us an update on how we're doing on some of the releases? Sure thing. Um, all right, let's let's start with the one one nine one release for Kubeflow. Mm -hmm. um, as you might said, uh, RC2 was released a couple weeks ago, um, waiting for the community to get some, some feedback on the new release. Um, but our plan is to release next week the final release of 191 so we can focus totally on Keyflow 110. Uh, in which development phase has just started. We are already um, gathering information about the uh, the component matrix we're expecting to see on 110. Um, our expectation is to support Kubernetes APIs 132 to 133. And we have also um, defined the other dependency versions like Istio, Knative, uh, Customize, and the rest. Um, we're also expecting to gather the expected component versions for 110. Uh, so far, we just got CatTip to be released uh, under the 018. That should be bundled onto Kubeflow 110. Um, of course, this is not something that we are um, requesting all the working groups to get their um expected releases for 110. Um, I guess we can discuss that until feature freeze date. Um again, um sorry, I think I should have added the schedule here as well. But again, key dates for 110. Um on November 18th, we're gonna meet together the release team to get a checkpoint meeting where we are expecting to see more than 50% of the, the work done for development. Um, before we go over the holiday weeks uh, on December 20th, we'll have our end of year final check. Then we expect feature freeze to happen on January 20th. Then we're gonna release RC0, then start working on uh, manifesting, testing, documentation updates, and then our expected date to release Kubeflow 10 is March 21st, which is aligned with the schedule for Kubeflow EMEA on April 1st. So that's our expectation for Kubeflow 10 schedule. Um, we're still working on um, had shadow uh, having some volunteers to shadow the release management roles. So for the next releases, right. we can see more contributors, more volunteers. And yeah, I guess that's it. This uh, one, I, do, 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 you have, do you have write access on the manifest repo, um, Ricardo? Yeah, sorry. My dog's here is having a hard time uh, with machine learning models. One did, second. Did you say your dog is having a hard time with machine learning models? What? Yes, so. <laughs> okay. Um. So, <laughs> uh, do you have write access on the manifest repo? Because there's an issue with that release candidate being marked as the latest release, which is breaking the website script to detect the latest version of Kubla. Um, can you mark I it as a pre-release? Yeah, Judas is not here. Um. Yeah, I, I need to figure out with with Judas what was going on. I think um, it's just a mistake. It's, it's it's you definitely that one's definitely not the latest release. It should be marked as a pre-release. Either even if it's the latest, uh, I don't know if you can mark them as both a pre-release and a latest release, but it definitely needs to be a pre-release because it is. Oh, I get it. I get it. Okay. Um. Yeah. Let me check. It's just edit. Minutes, you just got to click edit. That's all. Yeah, you're right. One on one should be uh, our situation should be marked as pre-release, not final. So I need to figure out with him what happened. 
Yeah, it's just a uh, yeah, because well, the reason is just because it breaks the website's detection of latest version and shows that version as the latest release, which is obviously not the latest release. So, mm, gotcha. Yeah, cool. good call, Matthew. Uh, I'll I'll take a look at that. All right, any other questions? It's a great update. Um, traditionally. You know, it's the last two weeks of a uh, of a release is is often very uh, hectic, as you know, Ricardo. And uh, as people are trying to get their travel getting together, I believe it's KubeCon right in in April first. Um, some of the folks start to travel to go to that, so. We do need to be very conscious. Uh, it sounds like it's a long way away, March 21, but if we're gonna make those dates and then give people plenty of breathing room to get to KubeCon and then promote it at KubeCon, uh, we just need to be aware of, of things as they go. And I think putting the schedule out and having the check marks is very helpful. A quick, uh, I just wanna highlight Ricardo. We, it looks like Julius just did it, so you're fine now. But also, um... Josh, my question for you is, do we have a specific talk? Because we have to ask for a specific talk to at KubeCon. I suspect that if we are not already approved, it's going to be difficult for us to get a talk squeezed in. If Amber has some, um, I don't know if Amber's here today. Apparently not. Um, we'll have to see if there's some other activities that she's got going. Um, but we do have our own AI day, obviously, as well. But I think if you want a main stage talk, you can actually get one as an incubating project. But that's a separate. Yeah. Um, I, just, oh, I don't think we're necessarily like I would while I would love to do a Notebooks 2.0 talk there. I don't think that's the right time to do it. You know what I mean? Either. I'm all for promotion all the time. But uh, yeah, I, I, I you. You do with what your gut feel makes sense, but I think the more that you expose people to the benefits, the more that they want it, the more they complain, the more that they push pushes pressure on bringing it out. I, I love that cycle. So go ahead, uh, Ricardo, I think your hand was up. Yeah, um, so Matthew, uh, one thing I would suggest to you, maybe uh, keep making promotions while you are developing Notebooks 2.0, just like the moderator team did. Uh, I don't know, maybe recording some videos with the um, pre-releases, uh, it would be great. Uh, and then you could use KubeCon to send the, the biggest release, I don't know. Now the problem is I'm not gonna be at KubeCon, but also uh, that will be, uh, and that still requires us to get approved. But if we're going to do something on the main stage, obviously, if we're doing it in our AI day thing, we can probably do it easily. But in any, in any case, we could still coincide a blog post and maybe have people talking about it at the Kubeflow booth because we're having a Kubeflow booth, right, Josh? I don't know about EMEA yet. I really don't. I'm, I'm barely uh, making sure that we're staffing the, the one in Salt Lake City, right? So, uh, which is probably another thing we need to, double check to make sure that people are responding to Amber's outreach. But look, I'm all for it. Whatever we can get done to do more promotion and do more human interaction. I'm really hoping that uh, more face-to-face -face and interpersonal uh, relationships builds Kubeflow even more so than our digital or you know Zoom presence. Uh, I just feel like that's a, a better way to grow a community or an alternative way. Better is probably not the best word. Anyway, go ahead, Matthew. Any closing comments on this? Or are you? Well, I mean, I, I just always want to highlight if you have the ability or willing and willingness to contribute to Notebooks 2.0, please come to our meetings on every second Thursday. We need people who are front end developers. We're using React and um, TypeScript for the front end. Um, uh, and also a pattern framework from Red Hat. So if you happen to be familiar with Pattern Fly, then also that. And then on the back end, we're obviously using Go, which is based on Kube Builder. That is mostly finished, so there isn't a lot of work to do there. Um, 
but it is good to have onboarding people if you're interested in just helping out with bug fixes and stuff. Uh, and obviously the, uh, the HTTP REST API is also written in Go. So if you have any interest in contributing to any of those pieces, mostly front end and the REST API, uh, please do. Reach out to me on Slack. Francisco, you had your hand up. That was probably on accident. <laughs> oh, okay. So um, one last piece on 110, right? Um, I, I would like to make sure that we start to identify the must-haves for the features that come in 110 and you know what would be a blocking feature for our release. Um, I think this will help us gel up uh, both on the feature freeze and on our checkpoints where we really need to do scrutiny or add more support for different teams. But uh, hopefully all the working groups are feeling comfortable and the liaisons uh, are having a good time too and meeting a lot of people. Let's keep going. We're 15 minutes in. Um, Kubeflow steering committee election. Okay. I put this on here. Um, so two of us on the steering committee, myself and James Wu, uh, are planning to um, step down from our seats, uh, which means there will be an election coming up. Uh, I have seen the PR on this. Um, hopefully others have too. There is a schedule. Um, I was hoping that Amber would be here and be able to give us the exact dates of when certain milestones are coming up, but they're, they're not too far off. Andre, I don't know if you have them off the top of your head. If you don't, it's fine. I don't mean to put you on the spot, but um, I guess it's just a heads up for anybody who wants to run for a steering committee um, member position, then um, this is your opportunity. It's, you know, it's going to be coming up here probably uh, in the next month or so that we'll start to do nominations. Uh, any comments, questions on the steering committee? Sorry, I'm not better prepared, but I just want to give a heads up flyby on this one. I think Amber has a timeline, right? Already in the drop doc. I just put it into, into the doc. Hmm. But do you have like a link as well? Maybe where you got that from? I got it from a Slack channel that's private. Okay, so. um, that's useful. Okay. So, so I, I don't have a, a broader link. I'm sorry. I think uh, Josh had mentioned that there's a PR somewhere that probably has this stuff. So uh, the, the big thing here, right, is nominations coming up uh, November 11th. Um, that's what? Three weeks, four weeks, three or four weeks away. Yeah. All right. Look, this is just a flyby. We'll talk about this more in as we go forward. But if anybody has any questions or we need to get the PR up here and so people can see what's going on. But I think this gives you a good kind of idea of what's coming on. Right. All right. I think we should, uh, yeah, okay. we should ask Amber what help she needs, right? From the community. yeah, there is there is a uh, so uh, there are a couple of positions that are necessary to run the election, and um, I think that the current st steering committee people and the people that are running often can't take those positions. I'll have to go and check the rules, but. I don't know whether I could be one of those volunteers, Andre, but I think I read before that the steering committee members couldn't volunteer to be a, like a monitor or a, somebody to run the election. But um, even anyway. like, so to be clear, you're voluntarily stepping down. Is that how this is working? Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, uh, I'm I'm excited to you know help the community continue to grow. Uh, but I'd like to see that um, that some of the folks that have been around the community for a while had a chance to run, you know, and make decisions. And um, I want to make sure that that everybody is uh, feeling uh, engaged, right, in, in a in a in a position that they feel they can make a difference. Oh, 
Uh, that's obviously your decision. I like, I, I, I've appreciated your service. So thank you for that then. Yeah, we're, we're, we're got a while to go here. So you'll be, you know, and I'm, I'm still going to be contributing. I just, um, I just feel like a new uh, set of folks, or at least for, from my position, new energy, new, you know, way of looking at things. Uh, you know, I'm glad to provide advice, but um, I just want to make people feel empowered, right? They're doing the work. Let's, let's get them engaged. Um, KubeCon activities. Oh, um, any, uh, anybody here want to promote anything, any, I know we have a list in one of the prior meetings, but there's several talks. There's, there's other things that are going on. Um, is there anything off the rails, uh, for, for KubeCon at this point? Do, is there something that's not looking good for Salt Lake City? I think just to announce, like Amber asked for help to stop the booth. I still don't know like if we can visit the KubeCon in person, but we need more people who can help in the booth at the Salt Lake City. So I know that Amber, she sent the, the Google form to fill. Do you have anyone here on the call who actually can help us with stuffing the booth during the KubeCon? So I, I got some questions about this, Andre, and I'm not sure that I have okay. an answer on. One of them was kind of like, if you volunteer to staff the booth, but you don't have a ticket into coupon, how do you get in? Yeah, I, th I think it's a good question, Josh. <laughs> um, I think we, I know that CNCF offered the tickets for, for members and, and um, contributors, uh, maybe for people who volunteer for, you know, re reviewing CFP. It's maybe too late already, right? I think that's the only free ticket you can get. I'm not even sure they give free tickets to speakers. They will. They they give. They actually give. They give free tickets to speakers. Yeah. Um. That's correct. Uh. I think the do if they give tickets to volunteers at the booth, we can ask them. Uh. But I think they definitely have a free tickets for um maintainers, of the of the CNCF projects, right? I don't. I don't. I don't know if that's the case. I doubt it personally, but I'd be interested to see. Um. So, for example, if you're one of the organizer of the collocated event, you will get you 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 will get a free ticket. Oh yeah, also, yeah. If you're like an organizer, yeah, that's a bit different though. Yeah, yeah. No, but also also if you're helping with you know CFP review, you also will get a free ticket. So, um, yeah. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I mean, I'm reasonably local, but I don't have a ticket, and I, they're quite expensive. So, <laughs> I could maybe help if it's obviously I have to still fly there, so that's cost money. But you know, it's I can maybe do that depending on what happens. So volunteers needed to staff booth. Uh, need the PR for that or need the... I think also one of the things you can apply for scholarship. Um, I think I've done this before. If you're one of the maintainers, you can get a free actually a ticket plus uh, uh, the... What is it? Um, I think they also cover your flights. And hotel, so this is also possible for the maintainers of the project. So uh, let's hope we're not spreading rumors. Those sound like good rumors to be spreading, but let's hopefully tie those down and make sure that we get true answers on this. We'll follow back up, but. Again, um, KubeCon not a long way away, right? Yeah, it's the, uh, in 30, 30 days, right? So um, if you don't have your flight, now's the time to buy a more expensive one. If you don't have your hotel, now's the time to make your boss pay for a really nice one. And uh, let's try to get folks there and support the team and have fun. All right, what's the, the next uh, component documentation, new workflow proposal, Ricardo? Yep, um, may I share my screen for a quick? Uh, oh yeah, sure, sorry. Here, let me stop. You know words.
first time sharing screen in Zoom. I hope this works. All right, let's try that. Okay. Um. So um. I was talking in the during the pipelines working group meeting with um some of the problems we're facing with documenting um Kubeflow pipelines. And then um I brought a suggestion to them, which I believe could be also spread across the other working groups. So here's the idea. Uh, um, first of all, let's talk about the current scenario. Um today it's up to the release team to be more specific the docs lead to update documentation for all of the components and thus that person requires a broader knowledge about the entire kubeflow ecosystem so it's um not only um people should have knowledge about that but he should be aware of everything that's going to be added to a, a given release or if it's going to create a new feature. So here's one of the biggest problems. Uh, that person probably it's rare in the community and not only this person would like to be the docs lead. So it's pretty much about this. Uh, the docs lead should gather everything about the pipelines, cat tape, notebooks, training operator, and so on. And then manually update Kubeflow website repo with um, the contents of the new features and make some adjustments in the components documentation. This is bad because we're relying, we're relying on a single person to do all of this and not always we got docs lead a uh, person who's an expert of the all the other Kubeflow uh, components. My proposed workflow, um, and that's the one I suggested to the pipelines working group leads, will be um, for every uh, repo, um, I saw they have a docs folder. So my idea will be, let's um, have each working group to have a copy of their component documentation under the docs folder inside their repos. Um, that way, each working group will handle the doc updates and then the docs lead will develop and write, um, use those scripts to sync up the con con contents in the um, in the given Kubeflow component to the Kubeflow website repo. Um, for every release, uh, that affects a, a release uh, uh, that needs to send a PR to the master and then a cherry pick to the to the version branch. And then this will um, make things easier to make updates to the documentation. Um, this one already happened with the manifest. So I was just wondering what if we could do the same for the docs, right? So the new workflow would be just like that. So pipelines working group will work on the pipelines documentation under the docs folder under the uh, pipelines repo. AutoML working group will work with the CADIP doc under the docs folder. Uh, same for all the other working groups. Then the, oops, sorry, this is the docs lead. So the docs lead will use the scripts to sync those documentations that will pretty much copy all the contents in each of these docs folder in these repos and send to the Kubeflow website. Okay. Um, why I feel this makes things better. We are delegating the documentation changes to the ones who are um, closer to the, doc to the uh, development phase uh, for each component. So they are more skilled to document uh, the new features are making some adjustments in the documentation. That way we can escalate better the work for documentation updates. So we are not giving uh, to a single person to make updates to the whole Kubeflow website, okay? That makes um, 
our website better covered in terms of updating the documentation. And while not saying, having the script, we have a way to automate those tasks, right? Um, so this is pretty much my, my idea, my proposal for initially for the pipelines working group that I would like to ask the other working groups, what do you think about this? But let me talk about some open questions I have that um, I think there isn't a, um, a right or wrong answer here for now, but one of the things that I didn't see any um, prompt answer to that is who to handle the documentation for the add-ons, like KSERV, for example, or making general website changes like the community uh, page, the architecture, the layout by itself, and etc. But I believe with that, we could, for the next release cycles, if, if we could adopt that new workflow, we could make documentation changes a lot more easier and we can cover a lot more pages to update the documentation from release to release, okay? Um, so I think that's it. Um, just wanted to hear more your thoughts. What do you think um, about splitting the documentation to each component repos and syncing them through scripts? Um, I, 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 I think that the goal of having the people who write the code be the people who write the docs is obviously the right approach. Of course, some people are in, aren't particularly good at writing, so maybe there's some help that we should give as a community. But I do worry that this approach, because there is HTML and other complicated code in the docs, that it just may not work. Like the docs are not kind of like the manifests where they're just straight YAML and have a clear output. Let me, um, so here's my question. Isn't the, 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 the main content of the repos written in Markdown? So what does really changes if we start using the, the Markdown, uh, just splitting the, the Markdown files and just leaving the HTTP content uh, oh. to the website repo? So they're templated Markdown. So a lot of cases there's like, what they call short codes, which are kind of like blocks of um, from the documentation websites, kind of like me um, meta templates. Then there's also even more complicated ones sometimes, like for the for pipeline specifically. There's some really intense ones that do things like add um, uh, what do you call it? Uh, Swagger, a Swagger API that we did recently, and stuff like that. And like so, I agree with your principle, um, but I think maybe the approach might be just trying to make sure that members are contributing to the docs if they have the capability to as part of cutting a release. Like more as like a review process. I don't know. Mm -hmm. Okay. But are you talking about website approval permissions then, at least for specific parts of the website? For example, Kubeflow slash pipelines maintainers would get approval access to Kubeflow web slides, website slash pipelines? They already do in most cases. Um, but of course you want people to like, there's certain, like, there's a certain level of like, you know, copywriting, not copywriting as in protection, but like sometimes writing docs, just, you need a person to review it. Who's not necessarily super good at the topic. It's sometimes it's easier to review. Uh, so having multiple eyes on the thing is useful as well, but that's, that, and that's another reason as well that I worry that in the same way that the manifests don't get updated sometimes, uh, we also would lose the history of the updates. I don't see that way because um, even if we make this split, uh, we will get this through PRs, uh, just like we do for manifest. So not necessarily we're losing the history here. Uh, and also it's, uh, um, it's possible to control those changes uh, under the components repo as well. So there will be, um, I don't know, a better manageable way for each working group to see which docs change happen through the timeline. 
there's also another factor which is redirects as well like oftentimes moving docs around is really common and that happens at the root layer not at the markdown layer um right. another thing is that uh there right now people as since we updated the template the, the overall design like you said people have now started actually clicking give feedback on specific pages and it helps it when it's in the main website repo of course sometimes that means people don't see the issues that they should uh, and edit as well like they can click edit this page or give feedback on this page and it gives the right thing and that could be a little bit painful to do if they're in 10 different repos also there's just the fact that having 10 different versions of the docs for each component because each component is going to cut their own releases and they might not cut them at exactly the same time as the docs get updated for that version and things like that I docs tend to be still... eventually consistent you know yeah i think that's still up to the version branches under the website to to control that but okay um anyway, yeah andre you've had your hand up for ages andre sorry yeah yeah i mean I generally agree with this approach. I think we just should regard to investigate what other people are doing. Like, for example, like if you open what Hugging Face is handling right now, they have exactly the same problem that you're talking about. So, for example, like if you open one of the links that they can send in the chat, you can see that every component on the left side has its own releases. And you can always switch to the main branch or you can switch to the branch uh, which version you want to use, whether it is Transformers, Evaluate, Hub, or any part of the Hugging Face ecosystem components right um so i would say we try to you know take a look what others are doing and try to see how hugo can work with with, the, with such organization right because i know that probably high info is they're using their own tool to bundle all those docs but they have exactly the same what you're talking about they have the docs sitting in the upstream repos and they have a centralized uh, domain which is hugginface.co which actually combining all those docs within the single website. Um, and every component has its own branch on the website as well. So you can select the stable version or the version that has been released. That's really interesting, Andre. Uh, in terms of actually implementing that, like the actual code for the front end to do it wouldn't be very difficult. But the, uh, the difficult part would be First off, how useful is this to the end user versus just um, uh, like just putting because for a lot of version changes, the thing I care about is what was changed, you know, and sometimes that is less visible when it's a snapshot of each version. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's why I still think the Kubernetes approach is better if we can make a pre made template that helps people say, and maybe we could even have it the other way around where we could combine your ideas and say we could wrap sections in in like this was added in this version and then we can say hide the things from before this version as the drop down i think the problem with so i think we're close to hugging face rather than to kubernetes because we have like individual components which has their own releases and kubernetes release all this core and you know apps and batch api all together with the kubernetes version um that is why it would be hard for us to follow just kubernetes model right because maybe again maybe a user just you know just use training operator without any other components, right? And they want to maybe maybe 2.2 version of training operator. They don't really care about Qflow, other Qflow components, right? Mm -hmm. They don't really worry about like which version of Qflow this training operator will be supported, right? Well, so uh, no, I'm not talking about, Q when I say version, I was actually more referring to the training operator version. So each component would just wrap, you yeah. know, in their dot. I understand that there's some structural move problems that could be an issue, but like, so if you add a whole new section, but then we could just have like a metadata tag, which is for each page, when was this minimum version of the training operator that has this feature? And then within the page, you can also have minimum versions, like wrap tags, if you will. Like Pipelines yeah. already kind of does this. And then we could even just have a JavaScript filter, you know, on the left-hand side, like you're saying, which says version 1. Point, show me the minimum, show me everything that was in training operator 1.1, you know, whatever it was, you know. This is what Hugging Face is doing, right? I mean, on the left. Not has, quite. Not like that's what I'm saying. Like that. This is a snapshot approach that they've taken. What I'm saying is, we could still have everything in master, but just wrap them in tags, if you will, each sec, each subsection. All right. Yeah, yeah, so I I think they, moving. Yeah. yeah. Um, I, I like. Yeah. Go ahead, Ricardo. Yeah. Sorry. 
uh, those are all good um, ideas. Um, so I don't want to, to spend more time of the meeting this, but I I got some good um, things here, some good, uh, good uh, other open questions I didn't see before. So I'll do this for next actions. I will open uh, an issue in the community to talk about the new workflow for documentation. I'll take a look at the Hugging Faces documentation, how they do with splitting the, their own component releases here. And I'll see if I can handle all of these open questions during the... the um... Also, ease of can you add ease of contributing to like at little patches, you know, for end users, like helping end users, you know, bugs. that's, I think, a really important, because if you make them in 10 different repos, it's hard for users to add fixes for themselves. Um, also, I, can I just suggest that because this is like such a significant change, can you please make it as a proper proposal? Like, uh, give a reasons for things that are, because then I, because I want to see alternatives as well. Like, I like, uh, so what I mean is, like, say the problem, and then say what you're trying to do and then why this is the best solution to your problems that you're listing. Like what are the actual problems for the project? Like it's not perfect right now, but it also isn't catastrophically broken right now. So yeah, that's just my request. So anything you do should be that. Okay, yeah, that, that sounds reasonable. Um, I'll also add uh, uh, why this motivates this new workflow proposal as well. And yeah, it will be all documented in the, the issue I'm going to create on the Kipflow community. And I'll share those slide decks, even though they are, those are so simple. Yeah. So make sure you do alternatives as well. So like, again, I want, I want what's the problem? Uh, what is the uh, success criteria, if you will? And then like, what is your proposed solution? And then why, and then what are the alternatives? And then why do those alternatives not work? Because I, this feels like a way over engineered solution to a problem. It just feels like it. I'm not saying it is, but it just feels like it probably is. So uh, there might be a much simpler solution that still gives us a solution to your actual key issues that you're trying to address. Okay, cool. I guess I have everything. Uh, thanks, Matthew, Andrew. I'll work on creating this issue and cover all of these sections. Thanks. Uh, thanks for thanks for your uh, interest in this. By the way, it's good, it's good that we've got people thinking about the docs. It's it, it's important. Sure. Yeah, Ricardo. Uh, just to put a finer point on that, um, throughout all the Qflow surveys, the number one issue that we get back is documentation. So the fact that you have a, a proposal here and um, has, you know, logically thought out a way that we can improve, very much appreciated, right? And um, I think that this is uh, directionally correct in, in a lot of its, I think we have to work through the specifics, but, um, you know, this is fantastic work. Thank you. Thanks, Josh. Okay. Do you mind if I um, get back to the agenda or are we? Yes, please, because I'm facing a problem with Zoom. Probably I need to reduce. Yeah, I just, un I just uh... unshared your screen. I just unshared your screen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Awesome. There Thanks. You and you can share now yourself. Uh, you should be able to. I can make you a comment as well, Josh. All right, let's see what happens here, whether we're back on track. Back in black, back on track. Okay. Fantastic. All right, we're making good progress here today. We're going to stay on track. And we're going to finish on time. Website. So we don't need to go through these intensely. I just want to quickly remind everyone that in a week or so, we're going to emerge this one if no one has any particular comments about it. So I removed the emojis from it. Uh, it... Um, so now if you scroll down, you can see the preview pages. That's the old one. And if you get the new one, yep. So and now it just looks like this. So the only the only thing that we all need to, the only thing that anyone could realistically have a problem with is the wording, which you'll see if you, you can't click that's an image, but um, but uh, but it's, uh, or the fact that the versions, two versions behind go gray. That's the only kind of 
uh, thing that people should be thinking about. And so if you roll down, there's some wording as well. Uh, and then so if so for the latest version, it gets that wording. Second one from latest gets the next wording, and it keeps kind of going down. So if people have specific concerns with this, and they really think it's bad or other things. So again, remember the motivation of this is that end users don't know what 1.7, 1.8, 1.9 means. So especially new users who are just trying to install. So the goal here is to give them a little bit of information about when that version was released and confirming and, and helping them understand that really old versions of Kubeflow might not be supported anymore by their maintainers. Um, and so if you're a maintainer of a dot distribution, please, uh, please comment if you do not like this change. Uh, again, it doesn't really change that much now that's because it's only just adding a button that shows when a release was happened. Um, the, don't we... I'm still a little cautious yeah. on the gray out, but I get the point. Um, just my initial, I, again, I believe that the distributions need to put a plus one or minus one on this. Um, we'd like to get the majority of the distributions to vote. Matthew has been very um, helpful in, in coming up and, and changing the proposal and bringing back up this up to, to get it to fruition at the end of the month. Are there any distributions here that would like to either comment on this at this point, or is there anyone else that has a comment on this? Yeah, I think for now. Um, okay, yeah, there was a change in the you know, distribution stable now, right? Uh, there are no icons anymore. Yeah. There's no icons, but there's still the gray out, and this is going to go into effect. It's lazy consensus. If you don't say, you don't, if you don't say minus one, it's going, if you're a, if you're a distribution and you don't vote against this, this is going to happen. Yeah, I think that's the point. Um, we under Red Hat don't know yet how to do until we got a, a consistent conformance testing. Um, because what we know is that, um, like, let's take uh, Kubernetes versus OpenShift. We know that not all of our OpenShift users would like to see the latest. APIs, they just want some consistency and and, um, and they want something that could, um, you know, make sure that everything works well without any surprises. So we're sometimes a little late with the Kubernetes APIs. Uh, we feel the same with the uh, our Open Data Hub, but the point here is that although it's still showing that we're under 1.6. We're actively contributing with the 1.9 and 1.10 components. So it's tough to say that um, we're under 1.6, although our pipelines component is under the 2.0. We are starting to work with uh, updating notebooks. So again, uh, I'm still neutral to this because, well, um, not, not, it's not hundred percent true that we are so late with the versions because we're one actively contributing with the most latest components and two, we are upgrading component by component as long as the, the, the team has some bandwidth to do this upgrade. So we did this for. Pipelines, we did this for training operator. We don't, didn't do this for notebooks yet, but we're, uh, it, there's, there's a working in progress. So, but if you see the, the full distribution, yeah. Um, so, like, um, uh, so again, you can, it's a self attestation. Like if you have the majority of your components, but if, if it's like, why are you listing 1.6? You know, is it because there's like one component that's 1.6? Okay, like, so my question to you, uh, when does a distribution should open a PR to say, 
we are under one line. Um, that's at the moment the... there is no rules. At the moment there is no rules. Okay, so so what if you feel like that's a reasonable assertion? Go ahead. Okay. Like, yeah. Like right now we don't have a conformance program. It's very it's it's very like uh, my suggestion would be that you have the majority or all of your components at the versions or above of that version, but if not, then again, that's, that's like, it's it, it because it, 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 the purpose of this is to just help new users find it. So like, it is surprising that you would have 1.6 at this point, but yeah. Okay. I get that. Um, okay. Um, before coming to that pull request, I'll let the other Red Hat members to talk about it. Uh, I believe you want have their comments as well. Yeah, so we we are discussed internally and get back to this. And one thing I want to add is that we uh, we are also interested in pushing towards uh, moving forward with the conformance program. Uh, so if we are making progress on that, we all have a like more formal way to say like, which version we support, right? Otherwise, uh, before we have any of those conformance testing in place, uh, we we can just update those versions directly. That's my assumption. Yeah. Uh, so the only other thing is just like about the gray thing. Like I, the, the reason I've picked two versions behind is just because that is really old, like from an end user perspective. Uh, it's like a year old at that point or more. Three actually means a year and a half old. So. That's why I made that gray. I mean, if there's an, but I, what I'm saying, Josh, is I would like to indicate to people how old something is, which is why that I still want to have a gray or some other indication that you should, like, because the goal would be to preference the newer updated stuff, right? Yeah, I mean, why not just have a little flasher thing that says, this sucks? No, I'm just kidding. I, I don't want to do it originally so... with the icon. Like, I can, it's, uh -huh. I think we need either an icon or color, right? There's two options. Uh I a I, hundred I percent understand this. And I think you understand my position. We'll just go round and round. If well, I understand that it's, I, to be clear, I'm not trying to attack Red Hat here. Although I am questioning if you actually are on 1.6, then maybe, maybe, or if you're not, like if you're actually on a newer version, but yeah. So I'm wondering, so, sorry, Matthew, who's making decision that's a one year old is the old version. For example, EKS support 1.23, which was released two and a half years ago of Kubernetes. Um, so who is making decisions about like you know two versions is the old version of the but it's three it's three but it's again it's that's what i'm saying the community just needs to decide how we're going we're, this is our website no so on their website they can say we support 1.6 and if you want long-term support that is fully allowed they're allowed to do that but what i'm saying is at this for the community page what i'm trying to do is solve the problem of users not knowing where to go who are brand new so if you use openshift obviously you're going to go to openshift's platform that's obvious right but this is more about OpenShift is a very specific case in this one. But like the, for the rest of them, I would like to encourage users to find distributions that are as new as possible. Right. And that's not just for my own sake. It's for everyone's sake. Cause it helps the program of the project get new contributors. Cause otherwise they're stuck on old versions. And it's really a problem, especially for AWS, for example, where they are stuck on 1.7 and they come to our Slack. Um, they pose problems. They don't know how to upgrade to newer Kubeflow releases because they are not available in their distribution. Um, so there's a really strong benefit if we push for distributions that at least are only one version behind. Yeah, yeah but I think it actually goes three versions that you go gray right now. Three. I think yeah. it's fine. But again, I think as Ricardo mentioned, there's still a lot of users who prefer to be not on the latest version even for like as big project as Kubernetes, right? And similar to Kubeflow, right? Maybe they don't want to have the latest version, right? For maybe like two years. And make sure this version, you know, is stable enough before, you know, they can migrate their workloads. Yeah, but this is just one of the opinions. Like, I agree with Josh. I think we we need more time for distributions to comment. Uh, maybe not only from Red Hat, maybe from Canonical and Nutanix. I know anyone else who are active right now. Um, because I think it will be tough to just move forward without their, you know, consensus, right? Well, we're asking, we've given them public, you know, time to comment that, and they should be, if they're involved in the community, they should be hearing our outreach here. I don't mind putting a, 
uh, you know, a specific reminder when we probably should today to people we know at each of the distributions and say, you know, hello, folks, this is going to happen um, if you don't comment. So, I, Andre, I guess, and this goes it, kind of a more procedural thing. I think it's only fair for people who make uh, proposals and try to get things across the line that we give them a path to do it. And if people aren't willing to make a comment back, then, you know, they're not. Then... Like, and I'm not even that aggressive about this. I just wanting, I'm wanting to help new users, Josh. Like that really is my goal here. So if someone has a better idea, that is completely, I'm open to that more than just like, I don't want to force my ideas through. I would like to have the end user have the best experience. That's my actual yeah. goal. I, I... 100% agree. So um, that's just me. Let's move on, if that's okay. Cool. Uh, the last part okay. of the website one is just, we're still working on the DNS issues. Um, it looks like we still are actually managing the DNS through a Google account, but it's now not clear who has access to make those updates. Uh, don't worry, the actual pull request is less important. We should, we do need to merge this, but we should probably do it once the DNS updates happen. Just because I'm using this to track the fact that it hasn't happened yet. Yeah, so that, I think this confuses me on this one though, because we have this latest thing wrapped up in this and master thing wrapped up in this DNS. I think you should, if, if this is the DNS question, whatever. Well, no, it's, it's so there's, there's two, there's only one pill request that hasn't been merged yet, which is the one to delist 1.9 docs from the Google, which means that you only can access it through the dropdown. Um, and then the, and then that pull request there adds all of the templating that's required for when we deprecate the current version as well, just so that there are the same templates. And it also renames master to latest because for many reasons why we should be doing that. Okay, so what needs to be done here? We still have two or three items to get on to. Yeah, no, so the only thing there is just, um, we're trying to figure out the DNS issue. And then once that is, I'll bring this back up again and we need to then merge that pull request. To be honest, if everyone agrees with using the word latest for right now, that could be merged immediately because um, it doesn't actually change anything, that one. The other, only other one though that I would like to, Andre has a disagreement here and maybe he's right, that we shouldn't delist 1.9, but then at what point do we delist 1.9? From Google, that is not from the website. Avocado. So. Oh yeah. There you go. Okay. Um, let me just confirm if that's the one I was looking earlier. Okay. So two things here. Um, I think renaming master to latest will make a wrong impression that this is uh, the one that users should use. And we all know that master does not really necessarily use a stable branch, right? It's just a development branch. So that makes, maybe it's a wrong, makes a wrong impression to users that latest is the most stable, most recent stable branch they can use. I don't know if that if I agree that we should rename master to uh, latest and even the least one nine branch for the one nine documentation because from my understanding one nine is the latest version because it's the latest uh, the latest stable version that we created and master is still under development that will create the the future releases so. The problem is that that's actually not quite, I mean, while that might be kind of true, the issue is that the master branch actually is kubeflow.org. Yeah, I, I understand what you're saying. Um, but even though master is the one that points to the kubeflow.org website, it's not necessarily true that it's the latest branch. It's the latest version, right? Because, well, again, uh, when I hear something that is in the latest version, gives me the impression that it's the latest stable version. And I don't believe that's totally true for master. Um, well, right now we don't update the docs in the 1.9 branch, even though that is the latest version, which is why I was suggesting previously that 
uh, the purpose of the snapshots is to take a snapshot at the time of the release, even if those docs never get updated again, unless we change the process to like not cut the 1.9 until we actually have 1.9 docs in there. Yeah, I see what you're saying. And that's yeah. why um, another topic should be raised on the new proposal for, for um, documentation changes workflow. We should be more active with updating the latest branch, uh, the latest version branch. Then this should tackle what you you see with the problem with having an outdated one nine docs. Yeah, my proposal there is still just we should try and uh, as much as possible make it so that the main kubeflow.org is useful for most versions of the docs, uh, for most versions of kubeflow. So like we just have tags, like similar to how no one really uses the old Kubernetes docs, not the API docs, but the Kubernetes docs. They just use the latest one because it says this feature was added in version X. I understand Andre's comment that that versioning could be complicated, but I'm suggesting we use the version of the internal app, not Kubeflow. And then on the template, we have a mapping that says this version was in, like, so if, if the training operator has a section, which is for a feature from their version 1.1, and then we know that 1.1 was in Kubeflow 1.8, we have the te with the template, when you wave over it, explains that to the user. And it can automatically be done, just like I did the versioning on the, see what I'm saying, Andre? Yeah, but how you can deal if components release two times before the next Kubeflow release? That's what it says. Then it will say there is no Kubeflow version for this release. You have to install it individually and we link them to the standalone install page. And it just automatically generates all of that for them, for the user. Do you understand what I'm saying, Andre? Yeah, but the, 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 that like I think it's it will still be very confusing for users, right? Like, what if they? What's don't... no more confusing than right now? That's still the case of what happens right now. It's just no, there's but, no explanation. I mean, no, but right now they can easily jump to the one dot nine and see the docs from Qflow one dot nine, and if they want to jump to the master, they will still like the changes for all the components, right? So and those will still be there. The one point nine snapshots. If what I'm proposing is we still do it at the same time as we currently do it, except what we do is we start making it so that for most people, master will be enough for people to understand everything they want, including unreleased features. Yeah, I, I don't know. I, um, Josh, do you have your points? I know. We're... Um, so I just want to do a time check and, you know, there are two other topics to get to. We continue to not close this issue out. Um, so that's a, we're talking about two different issues here. The issue that we're talking about is actually not this issue. This is more about the wording. And so that, that rename master also adds the templates required to do the, these docs are deprecated for when we do deprecate the 1.8, at 1.10 at this point, you know, when that gets cut, eventually we want the same code to be there. Uh, Again, I can leave the word saying master, but there are also like um, um, like a lot, some people do not like the word master for various reasons. But that's a separate discussion. <laughs> and and maybe maybe that's within the CNCF policies. I'm not even sure. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I I think I think it's separate. So again, before changing how users see the website, I think we should have different discussions you know have this recorded so like discussion right now right like we, we discussed like new workflow proposal right also like how we want to you know show the docs to the users um because i feel like if we just not showing the the latest docs they won't see the latest updates before the people will be released in october but this is the sorry in 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 march but this is the problem because for example spark operator will be released in like two times training operator will be released like several times we're gonna have a significant like docs changes, right? And these docs won't be won't be seen, like users won't see them, right? So, um, yeah. Anyway, I think maybe is it, is it the word latest yeah. that's the problem? Do you want me to use a different word? I think the problem is to defaulting to the one dot nine and by default, right? When we go to the qflow.org. So, that is possible. Um. That is not what Kubernetes does. Yeah, I understand this. But um, 
it would also just introduce the 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 part where we have to make pull requests into multiple branches, which could is kind of you know that for that that makes more work than. Yeah, but right now it's very easy for users. If they want to see one dot nine, they can easily just switch the branch to one dot nine and see the. That's the... not changing. That's still there. That's already done. Nothing is like nothing that we're proposing is going to remove that feature. Yeah, but we we defaulting to one dot nine, right? Aren't we? Right now we default to master as as we have forever. No, after your change. No, no, no. The change literally just changes the wording on the drop down box to say from master to the word latest. What if we change it to development? The problem with development is that then that implies that you shouldn't use that version. Although for a lot of the times, the latest versions of the docs actually are in that version. Like it is master in the sense that it's the master branch. Yeah, I mean, I see. Um, I think it could be tricky as well for the users because I'm uh, looking for other, like, you know, docs. Like I, I spoke I, before we check like Hugging Face, right? They also have the main and master for different, you know, components there. They don't have, like call it latest. Because users understand this is like changes from the this branch, usually, um, yeah. Like latest mm. is in my sense the words I'm using there is latest version of the docs, not latest version of Kubeflow. You know what I mean? But like, this is the latest yeah. version. Latest. I mean, this is master branch of the GitHub repo, right? That's yeah. what it means. But that also isn't that helpful because, like, for an end user, what is the answer? Because I guess the the real question here is, if I'm an end user, what should I be looking at? When I'm looking at the Kubeflow docs, should I be looking at the main branch, master branch, or should I be looking at the 1.9? Yeah. Let, let's have a follow up, Matthew, for this. Maybe, you know, renaming we can discuss first. Maybe Black like, Community can kind of comment on this. And the listing is kind of a separate issue, right? We need to talk about. So the 1.9 is related in the sense that I do want to, because Google indexing the old branches, it takes a really long time for Google to de index them. Uh, is as well. So obviously we've delisted all the old branches except the one zero point two to zero point six, just because the C name records need to be updated for the DNS. But um, like so, what I'm saying is, do we from want my, to? Keep yeah, one? yeah, yeah. Sorry, I know we were time, but so from my past experience speaking with users, I didn't ever hear the problem that they see the incorrect version of website. The problem is the docs sometimes just unclear, right? Um. But it's not about how we structure the website, at least like when I was speaking with users. Uh, so they the, the issue is the people things. who get confused by that are often people who never end up using Kubeflow because they get so confused by it, seeing the wrong version. <laughs> yeah. But but we did fix that largely by putting a big warning on every single page. That's what with the main thing we did. We put a big warning on every single page saying, hey, you're actually not looking at, you're looking at an archived version. We haven't technically archived 1.9. You know what I mean? That's Anyway, are so, we, do we feel like we're getting closer to resolution here or should, cause we're over time. There's two more items. Do we need to put this back on the list for next week? Are we close enough on this one? Should uh, we talk so, about the other two items? So I want to get that PR merged in some form just cause it includes the updated warning labels that people can enable by turning on the archive flag. But if you don't want the word latest, I can just put it back to the word master and then we can merge that PR. But then we also need to discuss at what point are we going to archive the 1.9 branch? I, I, if, if you ask this, my personal opinion, I'd rather stay with master, but I, I defer to everyone else. I mean, I think uh, Ricardo brought up some good points. We could use the word head. We could use the word head in all caps. Or, um, main obviously or um working maybe working or something you know working is probably more i think latest gives me the impression i should use that one that's that's the only you should I'm... that's because you should that the reason is because that's actually what i'm trying to tell the user because i personally believe that they do benefit from looking at the latest version as long as we start flagging what features were added in which versions which we already do for pipelines, but not for other things. I'm not sure I follow that logic. I mean, why wouldn't they use 1.9? Because 1.9, for example, hasn't been updated. Like there's there's bugs in it. Like people, like the Spark Operator docs 1.9, for example, haven't reflected the latest updates from all the changes people have made. Or even pipelines for that matter. Huge updates to pipelines have happened. 
Yeah, but I mean, then why are we even making these releases? I mean, the, the whole idea of the release is to give you something stable that you can, that's at least been tested and it's got a set of documentation and there's a starting point. I get the whole point of moving towards master or moving towards working or whatever. Um, but I, I thought, just my impression is that the, the latest version would be the place where you'd want to start because that's what's been tested. That, and, that, and that's because foundationally, I think what we're doing isn't that useful to the end user. Like the archive snapshot, the purpose of it, and it says it with the wording we agreed on the warning label that we turn on on the old branches, says you're looking at a snapshot of the docs, not an archive, but a snapshot of the docs from the time of this release. Things may have changed. That's what it says on the old ones. We haven't turned that warning on on the 1.9 branch yet, even though it is strictly speaking true, because no updates have happened to the 1.9 branch. And that's also what delisting means. Like if, when you turn on that flag, it it prevents the thing from being really shown. You know what I mean? But yeah, I don't know. I don't have a good answer to this. I just I think we need to first off agree on what the end user should be doing and then based off that make the decision <laughs> okay um this is good i mean i think this is the right uh, thing that we need to be trying to make the end user especially early end users new users give them guidance so uh, I guess what, how do we fix that? How, how do we make a, a decision on this, Matthew? And in what time frame? You, you've been. So those two PRs, um, I think as long as I fix the word master, we should be able to just merge them because they don't change anything other than the delisting thing. So if we all agree that the 1.9 shouldn't be surfaced on Google in preference of, because also it affects our SEO because I don't want two versions of what is ostensibly the same page showing up on Google search results. Because, you know, if, if we lose SEO by Google thinking that the 1.9 version is better than the main version or something, it's unlikely to just because of the way Google could blow dot org. Anyway, so what, what Ricardo is proposing is the meta issue, right? Is the, what do we do with versioning of the docs kind of is related to what Ricardo is saying. And so I think there's two issues here. The first one is just, do we use the word master? Fine, I'll revert the word master there so we can merge that PR. And, um, I also would like to see the 1.9 branch see the warning label on it, just because it, it you already get this when you look at um, Kubeflow, uh, Kubernetes as well, I believe, the non-latest version. Anyway, uh, I, I think in terms of next steps, I'll, I'll remove the word, I'll change the, I'll revert the word master just so that we keep the template updates. I'll make sure that the CNM up, CNM records get updated so that the old versions of the docs get the warning. And then we should move on and just talk about the two last small topics, Andre, because I know that Andre wants me to do these things. Yeah, maybe we can talk it next week, but I, I know, you know we're like 30 minutes over time, but um, overall, I guess, thank you, Julius, and um, uh, other folks who stepping, you know, this what I know you also help us to move this forward. Um, yeah, maybe, you know, if you need more help, Matthew, let us know. I understand that you want to merge 62 PRs to the notebooks and platform components. Um, but I just oh, would like... Separate. Us... Yeah, yeah. We're talking about another topic now, right? Yeah, I'm talking about, yes, that's right. Um, if we have like maybe five minutes or just do, do you think we should do it next week? Look, uh, if we've got a huge amount of work that needs to move forward, let's try to resolve it in the next couple minutes. Let's so we can make progress this week, if if that helps. Yeah, I think the top. So the topic around like the spilling repo, I would love for us to really do it before the KubeCon, giving the announcement and other things which will happening on this KubeCon, and especially the new users will come to the organization KubeFlow, you know, ecosystem. Um, I understand. Matthew, that will stop your development of notebooks to dotto uh, because it will block you. But if you need help in terms of you know resolving this, maybe we should just you know move forward with something. Um, I would love to get your opinion on this because you're kind of like the only one from notebooks working group who is active right now. 
that's not uh, true. Everyone else is just new people who are working on 2.0. Yeah, I'm talking I'm about just the, the only person the on the old stuff. I'm the only person on the old stuff. Yeah. That's right. From the leads, right? From the working group leads. Oh, that's true as well. Yeah. Technically I'm the only lead, but yes. But the but the um but that that is gonna change because some of the new people who are contributing will become leads, but that's yeah. gonna take a bit of time. But um so the so, the, so for everyone who just wants to know what the heck we're talking about, uh, the Kubeflow Kubeflow repo has all of the Kubeflow notebooks um, and other core component code. It doesn't have pipelines. It doesn't have training operator, all the other things. What Andre would like, and I would agree, is that we should be having uh, two different repos for the two types of components, one for the dashboard and one for the notebooks component. Dashboard, including all of the core kind of profile controller crap and the other one containing the notebooks actual product that people use and so we agree that that's what's going to happen and for 2.0 we've already started developing 2.0 in the notebooks repo for example uh, but we do have the problem of needing to move the old code out of kubeflow kubeflow and so while strictly speaking that's not very complicated we can use some really cool git history filtering systems to split split the history up and move the history so we can even keep the pull requests history the issue is that there are a lot of open pull requests and also just from a releasing perspective there's a lot of github actions and other tokens and other things like because there's hundreds of components in there effectively like 50 or so and uh we get up get up actions and moving those will also take time uh so but the first step from my perspective is i want to try and get i know some of those pull requests are really old but a lot of them are still very valid um, and then as, cause, and, but some of them are so old that they're unlikely to have old contributors come back. Anyway, all I'm trying to say is I, I know you want to do it before KubeCon. I don't quite understand the pressure to try and do it before KubeCon because new, we're getting new contributors either way, but, um, and the end users don't really look at the Kubeflow Kubeflow repo anymore because of the issue link tree that we did. Uh, yeah, I, uh, um, I would say probably not 100% because I was speaking with, I mean, uh, for the users that I, I spoke like for the last KubeCon and the AI day, they have some confusion around this, right? This is why I feel that still there are some people who don't understand what we're doing as a community, giving the confusion around the repository, how we structure the components, right? And they will probably will start to open some PRs uh, and other things. Because, but I, I guess like for notebooks, what is the motivation, Marty, for you to merge those things, given that you will migrate customers to the 2.0? Um, what is the motivation? So that's actually really important. So that's so the reason is that most of those are not actually notebooks PRs. Most of them are dashboard PRs. So can we can we close all the notebooks PRs then and just you know think what we can do with the dashboard uh, PRs? There's still a couple of notebooks 1.0 PRs that I think should be in there. Like especially CERN just raised one that fixed the bug that they had a very basic PR. So that also means that what I want to do is merge them. Uh, and for the ones which are patches, I want to cut a 1.9.2 release, but not necessarily for the overall Kubeflow, just for anyone who wants to use it. But then for the ones that are features, we can include those in the 1.10 version of Kubeflow, uh, which gets cut on the new repo if we choose it, to move them before. How, how we can do it? What is our next step right now this week? Um, well, this week, uh, like, my so we've we've tagged a lot of the issues um and we've removed all the the random bot issues right uh pull request so the ones that are remaining i guess what we should do is agree on which ones are worth merging and which ones aren't you know what i mean like go through them and just like say how close to like rating it on a scale of like this one's not very close to being merged or is and how important it is and whether it's a patch or a feature okay who will make things decision? Well, again, it it it, it doesn't re like we. Well, it's just it, the users should make like the eh, no, it's like the notebooks working group has lots of people. Of course, none of them are really super familiar with the one point code now, but the like the reason I'm saying this is because I'm worried. I'm pretty confident, in fact, that. Some of the pull requests are so old they won't get re-raised if we move the code. Can we just create a tracking issue for this pull request and ask you know other people to contribute if, if they want to see this this feature? Well, what I'm saying is like 
the pull request is there and we can just rebase it for the user and just merge it if it is correct. If it's not correct, we close it, right? It's just, that's what we need. We need people to go through them. And so you talk about people, you want more contributors to the dashboard. Again, most of them are for the dashboard related stuff, not just the dashboard itself, but the profile controller and other things. Lots of them are not ready to merge. In fact, most of them aren't. They need to be rebased and fixed. But Okay, what is your proposal this week? Like what we can do right now? Uh, do you have people who can help or do you yes, want yes, me to we do have it? people who can help? Yep. So then we, we cataloged all the issues, uh, poor request, sorry. Um, we, I can, I'll make it, I'll make a new track. I'll move the, I'll move that cataloging into the new track, into a new tracking issue. And so I guess the goal would be to, uh, so hit like, I don't, you're not sharing, no one's sharing the screen, but like, um, this is all the issues. I mean, we're, we're kind of obviously confusing people here, but let me just, okay. So these are the issues that I care about. Cause I went in through and cataloged them all the ones I cared about. Um, no, we can't see a screen much. Yeah. Sure. I'm just sharing it. Yeah. yeah I'm just sharing it, everything. So uh, this is, I know the issue is labeled 1.9.0, but it's because stuff didn't get released. And I know that it's technically 1.9.1 has already been cut. So what I'll do is I'll make a 1.9.2 thing. And these things should like the, almost everything here is, uh, is a patch. Some of them are more complicated than others, but most of them are patches and pretty straightforward. So and this can we, is most okay, of them. does it include all the 61 pull requests? It includes most of them. Some of the 61 pull requests are things that would have to be in the next release. And those things can be deferred to the new repo. So how we can, okay. Um, if it There's also just the process of moving the code as well, but yeah. Can we just close the PRs that should not be, from your opinion, be part of the profile controller, notebooks controller, and other parts of this platform based components? Um, or, okay, well, we can, PRs here. Uh, there's quite a few PRs there. There's some that are raised recently, uh, like this one. I was previously using the milestone 1.9.1. I'll rename that milestone to 1.9. What I want to do is cut a 1.9.2 release. So, like, effectively, these PRs um, are mostly patches and issues. Some of these are issues. Mm -hmm. But okay, so but in any case, we need to move code to the new repo, right? Like, I mean, well, need is a strong word, but yes, we can move code to the new repo. Okay, are you suggesting to remove notebooks one or two completely, and not releasing no. this in the next key flow? Uh, or... Well, no. So like, the issue is just that it takes time, right? Like, I'm happy to do these things. Like, I'm not against them happening. It's just that we have to be careful about making sure that we use the time to like so the moving of code also requires setting up all the release process on the new repos. Okay. And so what I'm worried about is like, we are, we, you know, 1.10, you know, for better or worse could just be released for the 1.0 code out of the old repo. So why if we agree in April that we only have a three months to move the code, right? That was your, that was your proposal, man. Like I, no, so it wasn't my proposal. It was James proposal and Josh proposal out of the folks from steering committee, right? Sure. But like, the world is a messy place. Things sometimes have to slip, right? <laughs> okay. We have some folks here on the call. Do you agree or disagree with my opinion on those things that we need to move forward? Or we should just postpone it to the couple of years before we kind of delete all those components um, at the end? Well, some of them could be moved sooner, like dashboard, you know? Okay. So, I mean, I would love to hear, like, so any other opinions on this, like, um, because the problem is we don't have people who can maintain platform components right now. The notebooks kind of like, you know, change. That, that doesn't change if we move the code. In fact, it actually might make it even harder to maintain. Ricardo, go ahead. Oh, you, okay. You don't have anything else. So again, uh, I, I don't think much it will, uh, Ricardo, you want to say something? Yeah, sorry. Um, my uh thoughts here what if we monitor the activity on each of these platform components and we choose the ones with least activity and focus on moving the code prs issues and everything else 
to the PR, to the right repo, right? I mean, it looks like for me, Central Dashboard does not have much activity. So probably it will be a good candidate to move all this stuff, right? Um, mm, gotcha. Definitely. I would agree that the first move should be the dashboard, but that means also access management and machine controller, central dashboard and profile controller. Yeah, okay. and Julie can help us with this, right? Because we agree with the, some, we have some- Well, he can help, but like, it, he, like that's fine. And that's that, I'm, I'm thankful for that. So let's try and get those merged. If you want a next step then, then let's try and review. And so he's happy, everyone's help welcome. I don't need to be the one to say yes or no. People should look at the code themselves and be like, okay, that was a bad PR. It's not worth the time anymore. It doesn't need it. Okay, let me ask you. So, Julie, since you're on the call, do you think we can just, you know, start with moving code and merging these powerful profile components? And Don't you know, just merge them, please. Like, let's review them, but yeah, yeah. Go ahead, Julie. Um, well, of course, I can go through the PRs and comment my opinion there, whether we should continue or just close them. And then when the PRs for one component are closed, we can move this component to the new repository, central dashboard or notebooks. Yeah, so can Maybe we at least start with these four components, right? Access management, webhook, dashboard, and profile, right? Yes, we can we can do this. So okay, Julius, what is your perspective given that you kind of volunteer to be part of the one of the owners of those components? Um yeah, I can try to help there. I'm I'm not sure how when I'm will be finished, but I can try to help. So I guess like once we merge all those PRs, we can just move the codes, right, Matthew? We can move that code, yeah. So, like, because we're gonna have to split it either way. So, the, um, so because then the benefit is that it also like let's agree probably that the one point ten release for notebooks will just still happen on the main repo, on the Kubeflow Kubeflow repo. Um, I'm not sure. Like, okay, uh, I I don't think I I don't see a problem for us to move notebooks to the Kubeflow notebooks. Why are we creating those repo then, like in April? Uh, well, that's for two point mostly. Like, it's like so eventually all these other components will be deleted. No, but what, what so, is the problem to move notebooks to the Kubeflow of notebooks? Well, and it's, just, it's a lot of work for one release, but also it's um, like, because we're going to be deleting them after one release, so like stopping supporting them after one release, right? Okay. But it's also yes. okay. it's also just a lot of, um, like there's some structural questions as to how we should structure the new notebooks repo, uh, which we've already kind of agreed kind of that we should have a branch called v1 because we don't want to put it in the main and then eventually the v2 branch becomes main once it gets released okay what is the problem to put everything to the notebooks v1 and then you know just cut the uh, rc from from that from those from the branch well, yeah that we can do that it just takes resources right like that's it it just like it means that we need to like there's a lot of github actions that happen on that uh, on that release you mean releasing the all of the images and, uh, and just yeah images poor like testing like it's it's fine it's doable it's just like the uh like that would also be for the 1.10 release because we should probably cut a 1.9.2 with just those patch releases that are on those prs and yeah that's my thought process there. like i'm not against moving it to be clear we're not disagreeing on that i i think that's good the issue is just like making sure that it doesn't create an impossible situation for the maintainers, including the people who want to start maintaining. No, but it looks like, I mean, from a notebook working group perspective, you don't want to move those components to the Qflow notebooks, isn't it? It's not that I don't want to, it's just that there's not much benefit to like what, like the, your, I, I somewhat disagree with the thesis that, um, that it's not, that it's a problem to not just keep the old release in 1.0 in this repo for now and then delete it once we delete it. But that's, we can still move it. I'm happy to do that. We're, I'm not, I'm not disagreeing that it's mostly just about timing. It's mostly just about timing. That's all that we're really disagreeing on. Yeah, but I feel, okay. Um, I know we are a lot of our time, but I, I still feel like there are still, there will be a lot of confusion for users who want to use notebooks one or two because some folks want to create an issue, some folks want to contribute, some folks want, some folks want to contribute for maybe, maybe two years from now, right? And they want to have a place for them to push their contribution. I feel that we need to use Qflow notebooks for this for maybe a few years, similar to what to do for training operator, right? We're not just deleting the 1.0, right? 
we giving the patches, right? We will release the 1.0 for several of the releases of Kubeflow and provides, you know, our end users enough support who want to use 1.0. But right now, 1.0 staying unmaintained. We don't want to move we don't want to move that code to the new repo, right? And it's not use... actually unmaintained. Like the parts that people actually use are maintained, but the parts that are unpopular aren't. Yeah, they're maintained. Like the the notebook servers get updated regularly. The actual front end again. Once those PRs get merged, those, a lot of them are on those things, right? And we did release new features or fixes for the one point nine release. Um. Anyway, yes, <laughs> we're not disagreeing here. We should move this code. This is fine. All I'm saying is that let's start, if we're going to do them in a process, let's just start with the dashboard. Okay. Uh, okay. So how much, okay. In that case, Julius, I guess, uh, do we need any help from the community to, you know, review those PRs and push the code to the dashboard repo? Um, so yeah, I can uh, make yeah. a separate issue that moves them if you want, that moves these tracking issues. You mean to the dashboard repo? Yeah, no, well, no, no, no. What I'm saying is we should just make a new issue. Probably, again, I can't make new issues on the Kubla repo, but like wherever we do it, um, that says these are the PRs that we need to review. Okay. Because we need help with definitely reviewing the PRs, the existing ones about um, dashboard components in the Kubla slash Kubla repository. We need to review the PRs and merge them to finally reduce the PRs and getting closer to zero and then move the code over as far as I understand from Matthew. Yeah, and the dashboard part is probably the least complicated to move in terms of releasing. It still requires us to think about how we do the release process, but because that, that, like all these things just take time, you know? Yeah. All right, so we have, yeah, we have next steps, right? At least for this week. For now, I know we also have need to move one one sixty one is it one hundred sixty one issues to the new repos, right? Uh yeah, or deduplicate them. one issues, right? I know. Um, so, be, uh, Mister, you're still on the call, right? Um, I guess you also can help us with this. Yeah. Um, I think Julius actually on board one of the GSOC students to help us with the migration, right, Julius? Ah, yeah, this way is on the call, yes. Okay. Um, yeah, th that's the question. I can also focus on closing issues. To one, I mean, there are still 160 or whatever issues, and I can go through them, and based on my own um, estimation, I can close them. Maybe I will close too many. Maybe I will close not enough. I don't know. But... Um, the question is, I think Matthew, maybe we should have right like just a there? second review on that. Like what we should do is just, we should both have a Google doc or something that just says, these are the ones that we should actually move these ones we should keep. And then once so the two people just need to go, yes, you know what I mean? To either but that will just slow down process Matthew, right? I mean, I think Julius is, you know, um, you know, uh, he's con I'm confident that he knows like what, what, what issue we need to move where, right? Like some of them are quite <laughs> ambiguous. Like let's just pick a random one. Should this be moved or not? Is this a valid issue? Who knows? What does this mean? No, it's about like the, you know, common web apps. I think it's, again, uh, then maybe the... Matthew, can you move forward and create such a table wherever where you list this and I could click, we can both click, I, um, close or migrate and move on with that. But I, we need, I need to have some guidance from you there about how to proceed. But if someone, if if your GSOC student wants to help out, I think a really good thing to do would make a basic script that lists everything in a Google Doc table, and then have like your opinion, my opinion, and then we do whatever both agree on. And if we disagree on something, then. Uh, no, but what we need to find agreement on? I don't understand. Like we have a lot of issues. Well, no, because like it's ambiguous. Like some of these are really like there's like three options. There's close the issue because it's not valid. Close the issue because it's already solved. Move the issue to notebooks or move the issue to dashboard repo. Okay, so who who can you know step up and creating the, that table for us to? I mean, at least like maybe the issues which are not dedicated to these components we can move right maybe to the pipelines 
or to the manifest. Well, then there's another option as well. Yeah, that it's not even for notebooks. Yeah. I think they should be safer to even do it right now, right? Without any, like, you know. If Google those ones happen alignment. to be there, yes. If those happen to be there, yeah. Do you lose any thoughts from your side? Like, do you think it's a valid point or? I mean, it's fine. One thing we also, I would really like to get Kimonas on board again, but if he's not available, then we have to form on, for, move forward to the limited resources that we have. And I'm also fine if Matthew needs a list and he can decide how the process is, but um, he should create some tasks for the GSOC students and other people who want to help that we can move forward. Yeah, so the two, there's two, obviously, we can't do both of these at the same time. Like, we have to pick one. So I would prefer that we try and cut re cut pull requests, you know what I mean? Um, but, uh, so what I what I think is, that, like, if the GSOC student is available and wants to make that Google table, we can go through them pretty quickly. I know it's 191. But, you know, we could do 50 a day for the next few days, you know what I mean? Yeah, a B yeah. Swag, can you unmute and tell us something? Hello? Yeah, we can't hear you. Yeah, we can't hear you if we're speaking. You're right now uh, unmute. Um, Swag, are you here? Can you hear us? He's unmuting and muting, so I think he must have a problem. Okay. He says in chat, yes. So like, I guess those two things can happen in parallel, right? So if we agree that, um, so we've already got the code required to do the migration of the issues while keeping the links to the old PRs, because what we do is just rename the merge bracket number to have kubeflow slash kubeflow on it, just so that it links back to the original repo. Um, the goal would be to get the dashboard repo moved maybe by the end of the month. Let's say that, right? Because we're probably not going to cut any new releases there either. Yeah. And then probably yes, I think one dot nine RC two seems to be quite stable. One yeah, dot nine to one RC two. But the notebooks, there probably will be new changes that people want. Like for example, AMD wants to contribute an image for the image, just like we have Intel ones now. So I'd like to get that in a one point nine point two. Um. So which okay, we need to have a table where we need to close issue, right, or move it to the specific components, right. Effectively, just, yeah, loop through all these issues that are open. I mean, some of them have been closed that probably shouldn't have been by the bot over years. Um, even if we forget about that, let's just make a list of every issue in this table, in this table, in this repo. Uh, so, okay, uh, I feel like we need to close, and I can also help with this, some, you know, for example, KFCTL issues, right? What is the reason to have them, right? Or, you know, the issues may be, again, dedicated to other components like pipelines, right? So, yeah, so there's, so I guess there's a couple of different states, right? And effectively, we just have a drop down box, which, you know, each person who's reviewing, you can have some, I can have some, right? And then to whoever two people agree on, whichever issues two people agree on, that's what we do with it, you know? All right. So, okay. Um, th does that make sense to you? Uh, is what... So the columns, yeah. Okay. He's just asking what columns you want to include. So the first one would just be a, li a link so that it's clickable. Because that we can it makes it easier for reviewers to the issue. Then the next one is you know reviewer proposed action, and then maybe some reviewer notes just in case it's confusing, right? So, like um, the actions that I could say would be there'd be three categories. Obviously, close or move is the first kind of group grouping, and then under that it could be move to notebooks, move to dashboard, or move to the, some other repo. And then the other one is close because it's already solved, in which case we can close it as solved or close because it's an invalid issue for some reason. So close, solve, close, invalid, move, and then move right. to where. All right, so I guess like for the codes, Julius, we need to, you know, we just need to go through this profile control issues and then we can migrate the code to the dashboard, right? Um, I'm still, again, for the um, crude web apps, I'm still not sure because again, the KTPY was broken since April because of this issue, right? And I don't know if this should be maintained on the notebooks working group. 
given that it's notebooks to the toe, that I guess you don't use the you know common web, web app, right? Well, we do for the other components, right? The um, that so like, I, I mean, what I'm uh, the notebook, this thing not being updated. I mean, sure, that's a problem. We need to figure that out. Um, the 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 for for the PPC viewer is still going to be there, and the volumes web app, which is under here. Uh, the, uh, at some point we might replace it with the new notebook stuff, but initially it won't be. Uh, but again, boards obviously will be removed, but okay. I just don't understand how we can move because some of other components are using the same uh, right. Um... Uh, part of the code, right? Which means, like, if this component will be deleted, the KTPI also will be broken. So right? then, maybe, maybe we should be leaving notebooks in the Kubla Kubla repo, and then just removing the other parts of it once we're removing 1.0. That's kind of what I was saying. Yeah, I don't know. Like, I mean, okay. Then maybe CRUD web apps is the only thing with on with no other code left in it once 2.0 is released. You know, or 1.0 is deprecated. But I agree, you maybe want to have places where people can put patch releases. That's kind of what you're saying, right? Yes. Um, okay, I, I will ping some folks from Canonical, maybe from CERN to see if you have anyone who is interested to maintain notebooks to uh, You know, we're they... happy to maintain it in the sense of like, as long as the pull request for patch is not features. No, but imagine the problem is like, we need to maintain the different repo, right? Not in the Qflow, Qflow. So again, even days. if we moved it, that's what, so I'm happy to move it. The issue just being for you specifically that you depend on some of the code under here. It's it's fine. I mean, if you want to maintain it on the Qflow notebooks, it's not an issue for for KTPI. Because right? yeah, my proposal for notebooks is that we create a branch just like we have for. Uh, so we talked about for you options. I'm interested to hear people's thoughts. We could either include some of it under main, or we've got notebooks 2.0 here just because that's where we're developing it for the first release. There's two options. We can either move the 1.0 code to main, which is problematic because we need to be able to cut releases that are separate versions, you know? Uh, so I'm proposing that we move the 1.0 code under notebooks dash v1. So another option could be creating another repo notebooks hyphen v1, right? Yeah, I don't, there's no real benefit to that because we can just make the main branch readme point you to the right branch. No, but the problem how you will oh, oh, release this, right? You need to make uh, two, two set of release branches for V1 and V2. Fine, because they still have this. They're not going to overlap. It'll be release dash 1.0 to release dash 2.0. You know what I mean? Like 2.x, whatever. Yeah. So, OK, I think what we did for training operator, we're planning to release 1.10 as the latest release branch for V1. And we're planning to only use this branch for any bug fixes or patches for V1. Um, I just don't understand. So you can easily create the you know one dot one dot nine dot one branch and put the code there, right? Uh and then there will, another, yeah, I think there's a because there will be two versions kind of there will be a one point ten and a, probably a one point eleven because there will probably be a one point ten and eleven. And again, some of these versions are going to have to move back into the main branch once two point gets done because unless we subsume volumes into the new version of notebooks. Why you can't keep 1.9 as the latest version of notebooks to 1.0? Well, that, that, that we probably could, yeah, that we probably could, yes. And only do patches. Yeah, that's that's probably what we should do, yeah. This is what we do, what we're going to do with the training operator, right? So, so the, the only version. concern I have with that is, I think what we should still do is have notebooks dash v1 and then cut release um, and then cherry pick, because uh, we still have the problem that we might want to continue releasing 1.10 for PVC viewer, for example. Why you can't do this in 1.9.10 or 1.9.11, wherever you can have a patch release? You can have a 1.9 as oh, a final for, for, for your notebooks, right? 1.0. But, uh, but what about if they continue to be used? Do you know what I mean? Like we could, like we need to make a decision, I guess, as to whether we try and move that functionality it's really only for volumes and maybe tensor boards into um i guess tensor boards we only make a decision that, that will be removed right in the 1.10 um tensor boards we just need to there is someone who made a huge pr recently that might have made it okay though like you know what i mean like that's kind of my only concern there
Okay. Yeah. So do you have your hands up? Um, I think maybe. Yeah. yeah good. Hello. Good. Uh, am I audible? Yeah. Yes. yes. Okay. Yeah. So the column should include uh, one should be the link for the issue, right? And next for the for the proposed action for the reviewer, which should be either close or merge or either way. Or then should be the suggested repository, right? There'll be a three. There should be like for let's say Matthew, Andre, and Julius are the three action proposed columns, and not all of them will be. So each of the it's the same proposals with notes. It's like Matthew proposed action, Matthew notes, Julius notes, Matthew uh, Julius proposed action. Andre, do you want to help here or not? Yes, I can help. And then Andre proposed action, Andre proposed notes. Yeah. Okay. For we could just have a notes column maybe on the right hand side. Maybe we just have a notes column and we write our name in it. That's probably fine. Um, okay, for, so four people for the review of proposed action, and there should be a suggested repository section, right? Uh, it, yeah, probably. So there should probably be two columns per reviewer, right? Which is proposed action, and then more if it's a move, you know what I mean? Like, and kind, of, like, and so it's like close. Well, actually, no, we should just do three action. We should do three columns. For, um. Uh, it's proposed action, and then in the notes we can agree where it goes to if it's an other. It's like move. It's like close, invalid, close, completed, move, and then like move to notebooks, move to dashboard, and then move to other. And then in notes we can just write where we say other is. Okay, so then it, maybe I could uh, draw a rough draft for it. Then maybe we could decide what it should look like. Yeah, you can do it with the Python script probably in ChatGPT in like about five minutes, I'd say. Because effectively what you okay. do is make a CSV that says, um, you can just tell ChatGPT, make a CSV, list all the issues in this repo, um, create a CSV with the first column being a link to the issue, second column uh, just being empty, and then you can just, just, a, for just, just a CSV with every issue. And then um, maybe we should also put the name. So probably the issue should be probably I'd say the four, four, six columns: name of the issue, link to the issue, um, reviewer one, reviewer two, reviewer three, and then notes. And that's it. Okay. I have to drop, guys. See you soon. Yeah. All right. Thank you. I think we have a next step. Thanks so much for this for the time. So uh, let's definitely follow up and discuss maybe next week what we can do uh, after this. All right. Thanks, everyone. Cool. Okay. See you guys. See you soon.